tell you, being the, the first up is the best because I get to enjoy everybody else without worrying about how mine's going to go. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for having coffee with me this morning. Uh, it's exciting to be here at National Harbor for satellite. And SGX is just a, an amazing opportunity to connect with, with the future of space because that's, that's really what this represents. So press on. Press on is, is a tagline. It's a... It's a a mantra of a former uh, of a friend and a mentor of mine, Lieutenant General Jay Kelly. Press on means work hard. It means be optimistic. It means never quit. Don't let your barriers, and don't let uncertainty uh, get in your way of moving on in your life and, and making great things happen for yourself and for those who you care about. So uh, I'm Mike Carey, as you heard my biography. I'm also like not in anybody else's mold. Don't let anybody's mold mold you, mold your own mold. You need to embrace the unknown if you're gonna be on, if you're gonna move on to the future. The future is bright, you have to be optimistic. Sometimes it's challenging, sometimes there's barriers in the way, there's things that you don't understand, but just like this young man in the, in the scene here, you know, he's got a helmet on, he knows it could be rough, he's got his rocket pack, he's ready to go, he's looking up to the heavens, he has no idea. But he's embracing the unknown, he wants to tackle it. But you know, if you don't go prepared, you shouldn't, you shouldn't lean in too hard. You have to prepare yourself for the future. So we're all kind of experts in things that we are interested in, uh, or things that we found ourselves chosen or comfortable in. But you need to be, read beyond your comfort zone. So if I'm a, I've got a degree in history, so what am I doing in the space industry? You have to read beyond. If a history major typically goes into law, goes into academia, does research, maybe banking. But here I am in the space field. If I don't read, I'm irrelevant. If you don't read beyond what you're interested in, your expertise level, you won't understand the context of your expertise. You won't become that unique person that people find absolute value in and treasure. So when you see opportunities, or when they present themselves, you need to lean in, but you need to be prepared to lean in. Otherwise, it could hurt. A good friend of mine, Dr. John Barnett, once told me there's many ways up the mountain. Just pick one. Growing up in the Air Force, you know, I commanded many, many uh, um, airmen. They'd say, what's the next step for me? What's my next job? What should I do next? What's my path? And most people define their path as a very narrow course, something that's logical. It's the next step. I should go from school to this entry-level position. From there, I should go to a directorate level. From here, I should go to somewhere else. It's like, there are so many ways up the mountain. When I graduated high school, did I ever think I'd be an Air Force officer? No. When I was an Air Force officer, did I ever think I'd be a founder of a space company? No. Who knows what my future holds? I certainly don't. But I'm not intimidated by it. I embrace the unknown, because the, the future is constantly unknown. And when you think you've got it nailed, I assure you, you're at risk. So don't let anybody put in a boundary or a barrier that precludes you from finding yourself in the future. Sometimes you're the only person in that position that sees a solution. You have to take action. You might be the only one at that moment in time that has all the alignment of all the planets, if you will, to actually take action, say something and do something. It'll change your life and it'll change others as well. You know, I'm not quite as eloquent as Will Smith nor as well known, but we share the same view of if you've got to do something, you've got to go get it. No one else is going to get it for you. You have to be motivated and you find a way to be motivated in your core and understanding who you are and then expanding yourself beyond that course so you become relevant and helpful in, uh, to other people. So 32 years of the Air Force. Yes, this is me as a young airman, me as an old general. But I was asked once, what made me think that I could start a company? What made me think that I could be an entrepreneur? I have to tell you that in my years in the Air Force, I convinced an awful lot of very conservative thinking senior officers about a different way to change uh, how, a different way to solve problems, a different way to address challenges. And they believed me, and I, I give them gratitude for that as well. Um, it wasn't just a sales job. It was bringing new information to change the context of the discussion. When I became the co-founder, one of four co-founders of Atlas Space Operations, a friend and colleague, Sean McDaniel, called me immediately after my retirement and said, would you like to join us and start Atlas Space Operations? It was an opportunity to become something, be part of something bigger than I was. I could have gone back into a traditional aerospace role, which is kind of standard for, for senior officers. But this was like creating a new opportunity 
to modernize the satellite control network, to modernize how spacecraft bring data down, to actually remove barriers to humanity. We actually believe at Atlas that we connect humanity through space by removing the cost and latency barriers that are traditionally inherent in space communi ground communication networks. So a bit crazy, started to be a, a, decided to be a founder at age 54, um, but I chose to lean in and embrace the unknown. And I assure you that about every week, I'm still not sure how this is going to play out, but we became Inc. 10, uh, Wink 500 is 102 uh, fastest rising company and 15th fastest software company last year. So I think we're on a good track. Uh, we're doing well, but it's the people that are around us that make that happen. So one of the things that motivate me is helping other people, creating opportunities. We've created over 30 jobs. We've developed a much needed capability. And as I've said, you know, We've, we've been recognized nationally. And tomorrow, Sean McDaniel, our CEO, is going to be recognized as the World Teleport Association as the executive of the year. You know, one of our colleagues says, you shouldn't be considered a teleport, so you should probably talk to the World Teleport Association. You know, things are changing. It's not the past, it's the future. And we don't know it, but you have to embrace the future. So I have to tell you that I've been excited to learn and travel. I mean, who thought I'd be in America, Samoa, Ecuador? I mean, those, those places that you just don't, typically think of a space ground company guy going to, or an Air Force officer for that matter. So I've experienced the world, I've seen people like you, and I'm motivated by people of all ages, of all cultures, and what I really do believe is that in joining in this new space movement, if you will, or the ecosystem, it's not a clash of cultures, it's a convergence of cultures. It's teaching one another how to do things better. And that really motivates me to see beyond barriers, and, and quite frankly, my experiences have been shaped by me, and yours will be shaped by you. So take charge of your life. Don't fit a mold. Don't let a mold fit you, because no matter what that mold looks like, there's always an open end, and it's called the future. You, how do you deal with unknown and uncertainty? You have to create an environment where you can center yourself amidst the chaos. So I was once a, uh, a one-star uh, general, and I was speaking with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff about how to solve a particular problem in Afghanistan. And at that time, I was the only person who believed that there was a solution for one of the problems, one of the many problems. Two weeks later, I was in Afghanistan with 11 hand-picked people to go solve the problem. And three years later, that problem was still being addressed the way that I envisioned it. Now, I have to tell you, there's a song by The Fray, you know, Cable Car, you know, everyone knows I'm in over my head. I felt like I was absolutely in over my head. I did not know the solution, but I knew that there was a way to solve one of the problems. And I surrounded myself with great people who didn't have the vision I had for solving the problem, but they knew how to solve it once they understood the vision. And that's part of leadership and communication, understanding people's motives. Once you understand their motives, you can motivate them to reduce friction and reduce barriers. And that really played out very, very well. And what you see here is a, a bit of Air Force art that kind of commemorated the activity. I'd also say that when you ground yourself in something bigger than yourself, you always feel compelled to act, even when you're tired, even when you don't think that you can be successful, even when you're demotivated, when things are hard. If you're grounded in something bigger than yourself, you'll be motivated to, to get up and just try again, to press on. And remember, you're never done. You're always a work in progress. You're always becoming something. So the more you read, the more you study, the more you look outside your comfort zone, the more resilient you become as a human, and therefore, the more resilient you become, more unique you, you become, and the more valuable you become. Egg Bach, another friend of mine, uh, an Air Force colonel, retired, um, Bob Cox. Egg Bach means everything's going to be okay. It's an underlying sense of optimism. It's not quite a kuna matata, don't leave your past behind you, but everything's going to be okay and look to the future. Well, that didn't go well. Okay, the last slide. There are many paths that you can take. You can, you can swim in any lane you want. There are many channels. If you're a strong swimmer, you can explore all the eddies and lakes. But all these, all these rivers that you can swim in all go to an ocean of opportunity and a broad ocean of possibility. I want you to remember that no matter what path you take, you're not going to know the future. You need to embrace the unknown, work through how you'll overcome barriers. I was told so many times that I couldn't be something that I became. I was told I couldn't be an international affairs officer until I was a major. I became one as a captain. 
I was told I couldn't be a missile leader as a captain because I was too old. I became one as a lieutenant colonel. I was told I couldn't be promoted to colonel because of my, my earlier enlistment days. I was promoted to colonel four years before my peers. Now, who would have thought that I'd start a company with three friends and be named uh, Inc. 500-102? I said, no way. So when people say you can't become something, and when you tell yourself you can't be some, become something, it's negative energy you need to get away from. And you need to get away from that by th thinking beyond the obstacle, thinking beyond those obstructions, and know that you're capable. And I encourage you each to press on and embrace the unknown. Thank you.